Hello and welcome back to One Trainer vs The World Season 3. Now after last time I came to realize something. I was complaining about Setsuko's stats just being kind of mediocre but then it occurred to me, yeah they're mediocre. When one thinks of them in a competitive perspective. Just as a mid game Pokemon though, it's perfectly fine. Like. I don't think she's going to be able to do much through the entire game or anything, but for the time being, she could probably hold her own pretty well against whatever the game is going to throw at me. Probably a really obvious point, really, but for some reason I didn't think about it last time, so I figured I should still bring it up. Oh dear! You know, I was thinking that maybe keeping Shensi in with all these tail whips and such would be a bad idea, but... Damn! So, note to self. Zigzagoons can actually be terrifying. Well, then again... That's not too different from my discovery that, that Rattatas could be terrifying back in Leaf Green. And by not that different, I mean it's pretty much the exact same scenario as Nia's, as Nia's near death experience. Before Nia's actual death experience, but that's another matter entirely. Oh hey, this TV is showing something from the Pokemon fan club. Is the interview I did last time going to be, <laughs> to be shown this time? Indeed! What was it about Zigzagoon that so attracted Vega? Pick up! I mean, it's true. Whoa, such a spectacular declaration! The love of this trainer for the Zigzagoon comes across loud and clear! Oh, there's still more? Let's check it out! Let me see now. We asked Vega, what do Pokémon mean to you? Let me win! Bravo! That's the best shout I've had all day! Let me win! It makes you want to shout it out loud again and again! Now that we've had that great shout, it's time to say goodbye until next time! So, let's all have one last shout, all together now! LET ME WIN! I mean, nothing I said in that interview was wrong. Pickup is what makes Zeke awesome, and Pokémon most certainly do let me win. Oh? Shenzi is evolving! Awesome! Now then, maybe she will be slightly less mediocre, although she's still kind of crap as a dark type. Because of the stupid lack of the physical special split in this game. In any case, that should have doubled pretty much all her stats, so I mean she is now twice as good at being a dark type as she was before. Well, it didn't double her attack, but it doubled everything else she had. Doubling her attack would probably make her too overpowered. Now, one thing that has occurred to me though, like just looking at Setsuko's learn set, is she can learn Thunderbolt via TM. And the game corner is in the is in mobile, so it should be possible for me to get that. But first I'm going to have to go back to Slateport, buy a harbor mail, and give it to a random NPC so that she will then give me the coin case. Which I feel is a slightly annoying way to get it, but meh, that is apparently how you get it in this game. <sighs> I don't particularly care for the controls in this game, they are not terribly uh, and responsive. Yes, I will indeed trade my mm, harbor mail for a coin case. And then I can go and do some button mashing! Am I just imagining things, or is this game corner considerably more hopeless than the one in Leaf Green? 
I mean, for goodness sakes, the slots don't even stop when I press the button. They stop like half a second later. Hmm. Well, would you look at that? My little pickup artist is evolving! Strictly speaking, he also was about to evolve a level ago, but I accidentally hit the B because I was just rushing through things while playing at 10 times speed, so yeah. But now he has evolved! For real this time! You wouldn't think it would happen twice in a row. But guess what? It happened twice in a row. A Pokemon started evolving, and I was in such a hurry that I ended up accidentally stopping it. Man, I need to pay more attention, even during tedious level grinding. And now Belle is decidedly less pretty. Ah well, she will be pretty again eventually, provided she lives that long. Finally, an evolution happens that I didn't accidentally skip! I just figured after the last two times and figuring that Kotori was about to evolve soon, I figured I would actually play it safe and not just skip forward when she was leveling up this time. Ah, oh, but now the name Kotori doesn't fit anymore. Maybe I should rename her Otori, but... Nah. Her name is Kotori. That is not going to change, because I feel like changing a Pokemon's name kind of defeats the point of giving them a name to begin with. Alright, finally my team is now up to level 22, and also I noticed Zeke had picked up something, but I was told that my bag was full, so apparently I'm going to have to deposit some stuff. Everstone, not gonna need that, ever. Soothbell, not gonna need that at the moment. Protein, not gonna need that at the moment. Revive, I should just sell those. Rare candy, could be useful at some point. Ethers are nice, but I also have Lepo Berries, which do the exact same thing. Quick Claw, not gonna use that for the time being. Paralysis heal is pointless, and so is Antidote, because I have a full heal. PP up, going to... Possibly use that at the very end of the game. Escape rope, don't need that now. Okay, with that, I think I'm alright. Now then, what you got for me, Zeke? Another nugget, which is a thing I'm just going to immediately sell. Now then, time to finally live up to the dramatic cliffhanger from last time and challenge the next gym. Okay, so I didn't even fight all the trainers in this gym, and good thing I didn't, because if I did, I might not have been able to even use March mm, Orson against the gym leader. But as things stand now, I can still use Orson against the gym leader. I've given up on my plans to convert the city I have, and so I put my time into making door traps in my gym. Oh? Now what are you doing here? What's that? You say I've gotten past all my rigged doors? <laughs> now that is amusing. Then I, Watson, the leader of Marvel Gym, shall electrify you. I somehow have my doubts that you're going to do any such thing, mister. In fact, I think that Magnemite is probably going to... You missed? How dare you miss, Orson? You are now the greatest disappointment I have ever fa seen in my entire life. Okay, you have been redeemed. Voltorb has terrible defenses, right? And Orson is holding the soft sand which boosts his ground moves. He's really a better ground type than he is a water type, considering how his special attack is kind of meh. Oh my god, the Magneton outsped Orson! Well, 
that was the most difficult gym battle I have had yet. <laughs> Fine, I lost. You ended up giving me a thrill. Take this badge. With the Dynamo man badge, Pokemon can use Rock Smash out of battle. And it will make your Pokemon a little bit faster too. You should take this too. That TM-34 there contains Shockwave. It's a thrust-worthy move that never misses. You can count on it. Well, that's nice. And now that I've completed that extremely difficult gym, I suppose I can now progress again. Now, as soon as I smash this rock, it's possible that I'm going to encounter a Geodude. I sure hope I don't encounter a Geodude, though. I did not encounter a Geodude. How nice. Now then, up here is the desert, but I'm pretty sure I can't access the desert quite yet. So, going over to Route 112, 112, which for the time being I'm not going to enter that grass. I am going to go on to the next area first, so that I might potentially be able to dupes close my way into getting a match up here. I mean, it's not a surefire thing, but I kind of want a match up. You remember how I said that the timid nature was excellent for Setsuko? Well, it's not really that excellent when the only attacking move she has is quick attack, which is physical! Now, this guy looks like he's going to want to fight me. But in any case, I managed to get past him if he did want to fight me. Now then, fiery path. What sort of cool or potentially not cool thing will I get here? Okay, I cannot dupes close my way into a matchup. Well, in any case, Torkoal is still fine, I think, probably. It just occurred to me, I have not bought any new balls in ages, yet I still have a fair amount of them. Just because of pickup. Maybe I should send out Bell. I mean, I didn't want to because of type disadvantages and such, but... This thing doesn't seem to want to stay in the ball, so I suppose I'll just have to hope that it doesn't score a critical hit Ember and murder Bell right now. That is not a critical hit Ember. Now then, Bell, use my beloved Sleep Powder! And then I suppose I might as well just throw an Ultra Ball to make sure that I'll actually get it. There you go! Now then, for this thing's name... Well, I randomly landed on a K, so his name is going to be Kroos. Which is very Norwegian! Well, seeing how I lost my chance to dupes close my way into a matchup, I might as well just go and see if I can get a matchup anyway. After fighting this dude I managed to ignore earlier, but I didn't manage to ignore him now. Well, that was difficult. It's most likely going to be a new mel, but it is indeed a new mel. And I'm even going to be so lazy as to recycle a name for it, because I can. Whoa, for a second there I was afraid that I was going to kill it. But I didn't kill it. It survived.
And now he is mine! So that's two fire types immediately. Do I want to to actually get one of them? Hmm, the game is, is lagging out on me. His name is Bolin. After the character from the Legend of Korra, who is an earthbender, who eventually also gains the power of lava bending, so... Earth and fire. Makes sense. Ah, uh, and now once again I run the risk of running into a Geodude. God damn it, I ran into a Geodude! Well, I guess that's my Route 11 ca 111 catch now then. Well, I suppose there's still the desert, which counts as a separate area under the rules I'm going by, so... It's not just a Geodude. Now then, my first Geodude was Maui. After the character in Moana, voiced by Dwayne The Rock Johnson. The second one was Dudley, after Dude in its name. So this one is going to be... George. Well, at least now I suppose I have a good reason to, like... The idea was just to go back to look at the natures of the previous two Pokémon I encountered, but now I'll have to look at the nature of this third Pokémon I just encountered too. Let's see now, Crows is quirky, pretty sure that nature does nothing. Bolin is serious, pretty sure that nature also does nothing. And George is modest, which is garbage! Man, what a disappointment! Well, time to progress on through the fiery path. See, couldn't I have encountered one of these guys in this place? Then I might have gotten a matchup. Which will help me for the gym after the next one. Except it won't help me for the gym after the next one because I didn't get one. Well, that was an empty area with no particular stuff happening whatsoever. Alright, Route 113. I am sure this is going to be a spinda. I did indeed get a spinda. Alright, the spinda is mine. I care so much. You know, I actually got a shiny spinda in, in Alpha Sapphire. I kind of deliberately went in to get one simply because, well, it's completely unique. Nobody else in the world would have a shiny spinda that looks exactly like the shiny spinda I have because the patterns on them are completely unique. In any case, I am going to give it a total joke of a name because it's a total joke of a Pokemon. Get it? Because it's dizzy all the time, so it never hits! Just like the move Focus Blast! You can probably already tell I have no intention of using Focus Blast. Neither the Pokémon nor the move. Because it's a terrible move. You know, I was actually fighting in the battle tree on Pokémon Sun earlier. No, Pokémon Moon, anyway. And Focus Blast missed five times in a row, and why the fuck did I not run into you as my first encounter? But yeah. Actually, in ten uses of Focus Blast, it only hit three times. So basically, that would that would be like it had a, if it had a 30% hit rate, but it's supposed to have 70%. So it missed as many times as it logically would be supposed to hit. That is how bad Focus Blast is. And why am I running into another one? I'm pretty sure you're supposed to have a 5% encounter rate and instead I just got freaking Focus Blast. <laughs> well, let's have a look at Focus Blast to see just how... Oh wait. The creator of the PC system is standing in the way of the PC. 
Get out of the way, creator of the PC system. I want to use the PCs that you developed. Oh, hello. You are. Okay, your name's Vega. I can see that you're a trainer. So that means you used the Pokemon storage system I developed. How I arrived at that conclusion is a simple deductive process. You spoke to me because you wanted to access something on this PC. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Lynette. Honestly, I'm glad to meet you. It's great you're using the storage system. If you could, please visit me at my home. My, my house is on Route 114. Yeah, well, I just want to access the PC so that I can look at Focus Blasts. Not in nature, which is... Plus attack, minus special defense. If it weren't for the fact that you are a garbage Pokemon to begin with, I might have considered that decent for a normal type. Now then, over here there should be yet more things that I can potentially encounter. Is it going to be something great? Oh look, it's the Pokemon from which this challenge got its name! And this time, I'm not going to kill it! Because instead, I am going to catch it and make it my friend! It's part grass type, right? So an absorb should do basically nothing to it. Yep. So basically nothing. All right, the Nussleaf has been caught. Now, what sort of name should I give it? His name is the OG, for he is what for he is what this challenge was named after. Impish nature, which is um, plus defense minus special attack. Uh, but both Grass and Dark are special attacking types. At the same time though, his special attack looks like it would have been kind of garbage to begin with. Eh, I'm going to take a look at what it could potentially be capable of in the grand term of things. Hmm. Even with that special attack lowering nature, its special attack would still be at least okay. I mean, its physical attack is better, but it has a base 90 special attack, which is terrible that is in its final form. So, um, I might want to consider it at some point, maybe. Now... I was going to say that I think I have to go to Meteor Falls right now, but apparently I first have to go to Professor Cosmos' lab. Which... Is this that? No, that is the Move Tutor. Which is admittedly still a thing I might need at some point, but... Ah, so I do have to go to Meteor Falls. But before that, I need to get something vitally important for Meteor Falls. Now you might be wondering, why are Super Repels vitally important for Meteor Falls? Simply, because I don't want a Soul Rock or a Lunatone. I want a Bagon, and you won't be able to get that until the very end of the game. So for the time being, I must use repels in the mm, in Meteor Falls, so that I can mm, so that I can potentially get Bagon in the future. Now then, I wonder if Miss po mm, PC Creator has anything cool to give me. Meh. That was so super meh, I have almost no words for how meh that was. Alright then. It is time to pop a repel! <laughs> With this meteorite, Mount Chimney will... Eh? 
I don't know who you are, but if you get in the way of Team Magma, don't expect any mercy. Hold it right there, Team Magma. We, Team Aqua, won't allow you to get away with your misdeeds. <laughs> Even Team Aqua joins us. But it's too much trouble to deal with you all. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We've got the meteorite, so off to Mount Chimney we go. <laughs> Be seeing you, you Team Aqua dingbats. Who might you be? Oh, so you are Vega. I am Archie. As the head of Team Aqua, I have dedicated myself to thwarting the dangerous plans of Team Magma. Why? Because Team Magma is a grave threat to us all. They have committed many destructive acts in their bid to expand the land. We, Team Magma and Aqua, love the sea above all. Team Magma is our sworn enemy. Archie, we should give chase to Team Magma. Yes, yes we must. We've got to hurry. There's no telling what Team Magma will do at Mount Chimney. Vega, you should keep an eye out for Team Magma too. Farewell. Very well, Team Aqua. Since it appears that we both share the common goal of defeating Team Magma, Team Your House is on Fire will aid you for the time being. Vega has joined forces with the mysterious Team Aqua to defeat the equally mysterious Team Magma. What will be the outcome of this brave alliance? Find out in a future episode that may or may not be next time.